Welcome to another Capital Raising Breakdown. Today, we're going to be talking about the Aura Ventures leads $5 million raise in ANZ CBA's Ligon. Okay, the, the first part of the article then, and by the way, the, the headline of the article, just starting off with the actual investment group. So uh, this article written by Anthony McDonald and Yolanda Redrop in the street talk for the AFR, it's highlighting that basically, obviously, Aura Ventures for them, they consider that as the most prominent thing to mention straight off the bat. Um, obviously as a known investment group in this ecosystem. And then the second one is highlighting the involvement of the ANZ and the CBA. Obviously, you know, two of the big four banks that everyone will actually know. Um, then starts off the blockchain startup. Right now, understand that blockchain is obviously hot right now because the crypto sector is just going through the roof and there's a lot of investment going to blockchain technology. The blockchain startup uh, created a joint venture between Centre Group, ANZ, Westpac, Commonwealth Bank and IBM Ligon has scored $5 million in capital in a round led by Aura Ventures. So you see what they've done. The first part is they've highlighted all the people involved in bringing the transaction together. The, the known component is all those different groups. So if you heard about Ligon by itself, you, know, you may not be aware who Ligon is. In the first paragraph, right, you're aware now it's a blockchain startup and it's been brought together by some big blue chip uh, banks and also uh, development groups, right? Property groups. So for me, I think that's important uh, and obviously technology groups as well. To me, that's an important sort of connection from the unknown to known sort of straight off the bat. Ligon was launched on the back of its uh, joint big business owner successfully achieving the first fully digitized bank guarantee anywhere in the world. Is also the first time blockchain has been used for banking services in a real world live setting. Now, I remember this taking place and it was massive news at the time. Uh, I was from the CBA when they actually issued it. And for, for me, I, I think the way they've actually connected that to the world is talking about they've been able to achieve a breakthrough first. And then what they've done is they've now spun this out into a joint venture and have a range of different companies at the table. I think really sets up for the foundation for, for the rest of the article. Now, the new funding round is being positioned as a pre-series A. I love the said like what defines a series it's pretty much made up at this point right so why is it not so that must mean the way it's defined as a pre-series a is a high line that that five million the series a is likely to be a lot larger than that five million amount right now ligon ceo justin amos said the blockchain company staff were also prioritizing the capital raise said the ANZ, now this is important, it's highlighting that existing shareholders in the actual deal participated in their raise and took up their rights to invest. And that was two of the banks, which is ANZ and also the Commonwealth Bank. The latest round adds further depth to our provision of funding as we prepare the ground for our Series A capital raise this, later this year. Now, to me, that statement is a first, effectively the first steps in their Series A, right? So they're already alluding to it. They're probably already having conversations with investors about it. But you can see that Justin's already got in his mind about doing the Series A, knowing that he'll require large amounts of capital. And then what's cool is they go on to talk about what the actual problem is that they're solving. And it's really done in a, in a really simplified way. Um, because for them, I said, when they, when they do this across these two paragraphs, it talks about the problem and it also highlights the opportunity as well. Um, and then it goes and talks about that Aura is also an investor in companies such as gaming news startup, gamers, ship it, um, automated inventory management software provider, trade gecko, in situ and Finshore. Okay. So what it does is then going for connecting Aura as an investor and their other investee companies that they're already investing into. Now, I so said this article really lays out the traditional uh, investor, the traditional groups involved or blue chip names involved, as well as the, the sort of, I suppose, the venture investors involved and then sort of um, aligning them or connecting them with their investee companies. I think they've done that really well. And then it goes to highlight the statement from... Um, basically from Aura, where they're communicating that Ligon's ambition to not only digitize bank guarantees in Australia, but all types of transferable documents in the world. Highlighting that vision at the end, you can see they do such a good job of communicating what the problem is, and then highlighting the vision for the company, and then tying that in with the opportunity as well. So as always said, these are some of the best written articles I think that founders and investors can learn off when they're talking about the communication of a capital raising or the communication of a business because every all the way through they're communicating the unknown to known and also they do a great job of highlighting what is the problem the company's solving and then what is their opportunity that they see. So 
That's another capital raising breakdown, doing the breakdown of Aura Ventures investing $5 million into ANZ CBA's joint venture, Ligon.